Sam again, back with another iOS 10 screencast. Today I'm going to take a look at Xcode 8's new memory graph debugger, specifically how you can use it to find retained cycles and leaking objects. I've been working on this amazing app called Kologi, which is fundamentally a table view with colours and emojis in it. However, it's got a bit of a problem, and you can see as I scroll around, if you take a look at the memory usage graph, you can see it jumps up and it stays really high, indicating memory leaks or something. The memory used by Kologi seems to continuously increase. This is indicative of some kind of memory leak. Memory leaks occur when objects in memory are no longer referenced by the running program. This can happen for many reasons, one of which is a retain cycle, where objects retain references to each other, thereby preventing deallocation of the memory. The memory graph debugger in Xcode 8 visualises all of the objects in memory, thereby making it far easier to locate, diagnose and fix memory leaks and retain cycles. Access the memory graph debugger with this new icon in the debug bar. When you click it, Xcode captures the memory graph. Here it's correctly identified that we've got some runtime issues in the form of leaks, and they appear down over in the left hand side as a list of instances grouped by their type. The first three here are all internal types, but the fourth one is one that I created. Selecting an instance reveals the ownership graph for that particular instance, here demonstrating retain cycle since it only includes two items. Choosing an object in the memory graph reveals information such as the backtrace in the inspector on the right hand side. Currently, the backtrace isn't being recorded for the memory graph debugger. This is because it's quite an intensive process, so by default, it's not enabled. It's really easy to enable, it's just a setting in the diagnostics for the current scheme. To enable stack traces, you need to edit the scheme associated with Kologi and then jump over to Diagnostics. Within here, enable malloc stack logging and select Live Allocations Only to reduce the amount of disk space. Then build and run again, start collecting some of that memory graph data jump in and hit the memory graph debugger. Once the memory graph has been captured, I can once again hit the issues button and then navigate to find the leaked object. Now you can see that the backtrace has appeared and I can even jump right in to find the exact line of code that caused the leak. This line of code looks pretty harmless. Let's jump in to find out what configure cell does. Configure cell is a lazy loader closure that's capturing self, which is causing a retain cycle. So let's put unowned self into the capture list here. Build and run again, and then give it a bit of a play around to make sure it's going to leak, then it will do. Then we jump back into Xcode and start the memory graph debugger again. Once it's captured, we can see that there are no longer any runtime issues. In addition to finding leaks and retain cycles, the memory graph debugger is also useful for finding other types of problems. For example, although not technically a leak, it's quite easy to end up with superfluous objects of a particular type hanging around. And take another look at the memory graph debugger, you can see that there seem to be 35 Kologi labels hanging around. Although that's not specifically an error, it does seem like quite a lot. Selecting an individual instance reveals their existence graph. That is the hierarchy of objects that keep references to the Kologi label. Different instances have different graphs, however you can always see that there is this Kologi table view cell. Once again, the stack trace will allow you to jump to the precise line of code that creates that object. Here I can see that I create a Kologi label every single single time we get a new Kologi, i.e. when the table cell is reused. I'm going to pull that out and put it as a property on the table view cell so that it can be reused each time the cell is reused. Now I don't want the creation code to be used every single time, so I'm just going to check whether or not that label has a super view. If it does, then I don't need to run any of this label creation and positioning code. Now I've done that, I can build and run again. Just need to play around with the app to make sure that we're collecting some information for the memory graph debugger. Jump back in, start up the memory graph debugger, capture it, and now we can see that we have precisely eight Kologi labels which matches the number of table view cells, a much better situation to be in. That just about wraps up everything that I want to cover about the Xcode 8 memory graph debugger. I think it's a great new tool to have in your toolbox and hopefully it will make debugging memory issues far easier. As ever, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on another iOS 10 screencast. Bye bye!